Hey, welcome back everybody to the JR Wisdom Show, the JR Wisdom Channel. And uh, I'm kind of late on this topic, but I just wanted to discuss it. And I'm done, you know, because it's kind of beating a dead horse. But it just it just kind of kind of irked me, if, you know, how, how they did this thing. You know, but to each his own. And uh, what I'm talking about again here, if you haven't seen my previous video about uh, Bishop Eddie Long, first of all, Regardless of what he did, you know, peace be upon him. Uh, the last video, people were making all kind of comments, and I've seen all kind of stuff about the man, but the man is dead now, so, you know, peace be upon him, and whatever his judgment's going to be, that's not up to you. That's up to a higher power, but January 25th, um, Bishop Eddie Long was laid to rest, you know, at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. And, uh, allegedly, you know, obviously he was, he was draped in a, you know, I guess a traditional cleric's gown. Uh, he, it, it appeared he had on some, um, suede loafers or something he had on, you know, but I'm going to get to that after the first, you know, thing I want to address is the alleged $100,000 casket. So I wouldn't say that it's, it's not far fetched, you know. It, it, it's it's one of those things where I'm pretty sure if it wasn't a hundred thousand, there was a lot of money spent on this casket. Why all this money was spent on the casket just for a man to be laid to rest is beyond me. Regardless of who you are, you're dead. You know that's the new meaning to the uh, the word casket sharp, if you will, to that term casket sharp. He was casket sharp, definitely. He spent a hundred grand on a uh on a casket for this man so what we come to is why is this necessary and why would you know whoever was overseeing this why aren't weren't they uh the assistant pastor whoever why weren't they responsible enough to say hey you know unless this man had it in his will and even if it, he's in his will if it was in his will how vain is that you know that those funds that you know whatever it was those funds could have been used towards something else you know those funds could have been you know to help someone in the church charity whatever whatever have you but to put some some a man in something other than an ordinary pine box is just ridiculous and whatever how much the gown was or the you know suede loafers that he had on that's a different story why is this necessary or you go back to the same term, WWJD. What would Jesus do if he was overseeing the proceedings of a funeral? What would he? What would he say? Would he? Would he go for that? Well, we don't know, so we can't. We can't really say that. But if you really think about it, as as modest a man as Jesus was, would he have wanted that? You know, you, you're going to be six feet deep in a pine box, and you're going to. I guess you're going to send them off to meet God. In a in a pine box, a hundred thousand dollar one. So it could have been donated to a good cause, you know, with all these. And that's where I'm coming to the point of the vanity of the church. And it's not just the Christian church, but just the vanity of the church. Of I want my pastor to look good. I want my pastor in a nice car. I want my pastor to be decked out, even in death. It's 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 ridiculous. All these depositions that you see go on, all these investigations, misrepresented funds of the church, you know, you got limos. I think he had like Maybox outside of the church. You had all have all these celebrities, all these people in tow. They were blogging about this man's funeral, blow by blow, you know, what was going on at this time, uh, actual blog and live streaming a funeral. That's so disrespectful. No respect, even cameras at a funeral is ridiculous. You know, it's 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 crazy how things are coming to this. These funds, the limos, the suits, the churches, the Gucci belts, the extravagant extravagant vacations you're going on. It's not just it wasn't just him. It's still people going on these conferences, these fellowships, all this stuff like that. All these thousands of dollars tax free, unaccountable. You know, but I guess that's. To promote the whole prosperity doctrine, so to speak. So my question is, with this prosperity doctrine, 
you need to look good even in death. As far as vanity, you need to, you know, go out in that way, decked out. Why is it that in modern churches, we preach the New Testament, right? But, which the old, the New Testament doesn't preach as much accountability on, a, on accountability as it is in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is all about account accountability. If you do something, you're going to be punished for it. The New Testament is just like, you know, be prosperous, live free, do what you want to do. You know, Jesus died for your sins, and that's that. And you got these guys preaching this. So I wonder if there's preachers who really preach this Old Testament fire and brimstone. Would they get a flock or, you know, would they have people coming in to the church? Would they not, not be as popular as these other guys who's preaching this stuff and making money hand over fist? Another, uh, if you haven't seen that documentary, Religious, that Bill Maher did, um, Bill, uh, Jeremiah Cummings, he basically tells, you know, women are fond of him. He's, he knows women want to get with him because of his position. This money that is flowing the statues that's being created for the church, these idols, all of this is against the Old Testament. Extravagant depictions of Jesus, you know, on the cross, rubies, uh, gold, decked out, huge mega churches, <clears throat> you know, marble floors, things painted, you know, so all these beautiful things, you know, it, it's so hard to meet a pastor, ATMs in church. Why is the church so vain? Why Why is that? Gold chains with Jesus on it have become so popular. Gold chains with a gold gold cross on it. Jesus' face on there. If you really think about it, if people do what you do, and I, I liken it to this, you can say whatever you want to say. If someone, Jesus is supposed to be so beloved to you, for some of you, he's your God that you worship, right? So you have this idol on your chest that you worship of Jesus, right? This man was killed on a cross, right? And you celebrate that through this on your chest. If your mother or family member or anybody like that was killed with a machete or a gun, a Uzi, uh, an axe, would you still wear that on your neck to commem commemorate your parents or somebody of that nature? So why would you do that with your most beloved, your own God, who you worship, some of you Christians? Why would you wear something that a man was supposedly executed on, on your, on your neck? Or hold it up, you know, to ward off evil, something that a man was executed on. So, I'm not going to uh, carry on much more. I just, I just, it's just this whole vanity and that you have to be so uh, appealing, the aesthetics of, of Christianity, you know, that, that stuff, what happened to come as you are, it's not a fashion show in church these days, which is another video I'm going to do about the whole fashion show aspect and the aesthetics, uh, dressing up to, to, you know, all this stuff, so let me know your thoughts, comments, you know, I, I'm more than welcome to hear them, like, share, comment, subscribe, um, follow me on Facebook, all that good stuff, check out my books, um, and I'll catch y'all on the next video, you know, peace. Oh yeah. Anything lost can be found again, except for time wasted. Peace.